Hi, I'm Natasha Lockhart. Welcome to Studio Chatter. We've got some great conversation coming your way. I'm Stacy Beck. We'll learn about the Children's Justice Center and the important work going on there. And I'm Angie Murphy. We'll also talk with a local company that creates custom furniture for your home. And we'll talk about a new magazine that has come to our town. And are you prepared for an emergency? All this and more on Studio Chatter. Welcome to Studio Chatter. We're midway through February. Can you feel the warmth of spring coming in yet? <sighs> Certain days. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. I will say when I left my house this morning, I just yelled out, I love spring. <laughs> Not that it's spring, but I'm like, I, <laughs> You could feel it coming. I just am ready, I think. Yeah, I'm ready to get like out of the house. I told her, I'm like, okay, we need to make some new steps of like happiness or da 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 da. And then I just was like, what's going on? I'm like, I'm tired of being in the house. I feel like I need to get out and just be outside yeah. of here. Yep. Well, feel the sun. I don't know what you're doing because you just look <laughs> fab. <laughs> Waiting <laughs> for it. Something's going on. I yeah, don't know. Natasha's got a crush oh, yes, on you I'm today. Like kind of girl crush today. I think today. you just like my sweater. I do. I love the whole look. You just look like you stepped off <laughs> of the, the Yellowstone set. You you're, do look gorgeous very, tonight, um, Stacey. Really? You do. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're cowgirl glam. I like it. <laughs> The end. The end. The end. Yes. Show stop. The end. Yes, you put it together so fabulously. Wow. The turquoise. The she's even wearing it, boots. Is it? I am. No, with the is it cow print? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it is. Uh -huh. yes, I bought this sweater like in September and didn't wear it for like six weeks. Well, so I'm like, you, do I even like you it? Should have. I, I these love are my, it. <laughs> these are my fiesta today's cowgirl yes. boots. Oh, oh, so cute. Yes. A little bit cowgirl. Yeah. Yes, a little bit. I like it a lot. Are you watching 1883? Why? Yes, I am. Are well, you? Um, well, we kind of we were, we're saving it. We're, we're what are you saving it for? <laughs> to binge later. Oh, it's a, yeah. Because yeah, we just wanted to binge the whole thing. But you could totally go home and just cowgirl up and watch it tonight. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Call Chris. Sweet. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Yes. So yeah. we booked our next trip. Okay. Again? <laughs> Get oh, home book. Yeah, Get home book. Where yeah. are we going? DC. Oh, oh yes. That's a good trip. Yes. We officially okay, when it. do you, you leave? March. Okay. Good March. I'm Have jealous of that before? one. So let me tell you a little bit about it. Okay. I've never been. You haven't? No. Ugh. So I'm 50 Love years it. old. I'm finally going there. And mm -hmm. when you tell people you're going, for sure do the Holocaust Museum. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. they're booked out. Oh. There are no what? more tickets. Go tour the Capitol. No tours. How about the White House? No tours. Get online to do Ford's Theater where Lincoln was shot. Mm, sold out. Oh. What? Oh. How far in advance do they sell out? Well, the Holocaust Museum when I originally was booking, they said through February, and so when they opened up through May, blacked oh, out. Oh. I wonder if there's so many schools going in March Because I know April. Spanish Fort goes yeah. but, during that but time. But April, did you say April? May, March. March. Mm, but you might, that might be it. If you're at the tail end, you might hit cherry blossom season because I think we're going to be a little early. Is, it's like oh, March 10th. so beautiful. And why did my mind just go blank? What's the big, big museum? Like the Lincoln. The, Smith, the, the Smithsonian. Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. I just, yeah, Smithsonian. Yes. Smithsonian. Oh, yeah, I think there's going to be able to do. Yeah, and I think maybe I need to hit the things that maybe I would have saved for a second or third visit, mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to have to go back. Yeah. And and yes, and you can. I just worry, like, Fantastic. there's so much to see in the world. I know. What if I don't get back to these places? Well, I and want to it see is. So tricky things. places like that. Mm -hmm. It's not like a Disneyland where you may go a lot. It's like kind of but like... But then even just going to Disney World, coming back, I'm like... We'll go again? Well, I or don't not. know, but I'm thinking there's so many things we missed because they were closed, weather... Like, right, and you just don't know until you've experienced yeah, it so once like, what you I need to do. I can see why people go to Disney again and again. Mm -hmm. I think I finally get it. Yeah, right? <laughs> but as an American, that's like one of the things that you just would totally... Go to Disneyland just, or D.C.? No, D.C. And totally okay, I need appreciate to go. I the agree. history. Just mm -hmm. amazing. Just I'm excited. blah, 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 blah. I'm yeah. excited. Mm. And you're planning birthday party for Barrett. Yes, yes. So I think we even talked 11? about that last time. No, the 21st. No, but I mean, is she turning 11? Oh, she's turning 11. Yes. Double digits. So, Natasha, when you and I really met, when we started this, she was six years I know. old. I know. Can you believe it? I mean, it just flies. She's preteen. She is. <laughs> and she's getting braces tomorrow. So by the time the, by the time this airs, by the time that you see her again, I mean, she's... She'll be 11. <laughs> 
preteen. She's, she's going to look so braces. much older too she's with braces. She's going to look older, oh. but she's all about She's it excited now. though, oh, right? She's totally excited, yes. Oh, wow. So, so well, much fun. Have a fun birthday. I know you always go all out, so please yep. oh, take I'm lots sure of pictures we'll and share. Uh, yeah, it's going to be tricky. Episode. It's going to be, it might even be a two part birthday because it's on the holiday. So oh, it is. We've been hard. It's been a little difficult to book things, but that's okay. okay. That's okay. Oh, good luck. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Yep. And how are you, Anne? I'm fine. I've just been busy, guys. But we have had today. I got to go down and watch my two grandkids do gymnastics. They're taking tumbling at high. The two two-year-olds. Oh, oh my heavens! So yummy. And they are so yummy. And those cute little diaper bums just running around. So oh that my was gosh, just a the highlight. Two -year -olds? Uh huh. They have one boy in their class, and then those two. Mm -hmm. And it is the cutest class. But the other mom came up to me today because it's a mommy and me class. So I was just taking pictures and mm -hmm. watching and she's like you're the cutest grandma and I'm like no really not I'm feeling guilty that I'm not engaged more but I'm like this is just a joy Aww. so then I've become Troy's Gigi when I'm down there too that's the little boy Aww. so giving him high so fives. were you the mom were you out there I with did, them I was the mom last time I went okay, because this time you Mal was sick yeah this time I was just the helper Oh, okay. just a cheerleader. That but sounds fun. It's really fun. So that was fun. Mal, Mal and Tay both turned 30 this next month. So oh that's kind of been gosh. a big to do. And My daughter Brianna does too. Her husband just texted me tonight and said, I just booked her 30th birthday trip. Will you tend? Yes, I will, because I believe oh, that you, right. like, you need it's it. It's so important in yep. marriage to get away together. Now we're trying to yeah. figure out what to do or what they're going to do. So Taylor's booked a trip. Mal was going to, and now we're trying to figure out what to do. So... Well, fun. Uh -huh. Big, big. Yeah, big stuff. And then just busy working and studio chatter, guys. It's We've busy. been busy. Yeah, we have yeah. been. Yeah, well, everybody's busy. booking trips. I think that we actually discussed that on the way out the door the last oh, time yes. that we were here. Are, are you so proud of me? I Where finally, are you going? You I booked. finally booked. Yes, we're finally going back to Hawaii. Oh, <laughs> finally. Oahu? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yep, yeah. Yep, kids? No kids. We're going to take the kids. Have you before? We have, but we usually take them in the fall when we've gone in the past. Okay, but we're going to going. take them for spring break this this time, oh, just because it's been a minute. So, so you'll go for the whole week. We'll go for a week, a little week plus, I think. Okay. So, so what are your plans? Because you've been there before. So, what are your your go tos? Um. Well, we usually stay at Koalina, and then we usually go down one lagoon to Alani and have breakfast at Disney there. Okay. And then we usually go into the island and just, you know, do our shopping and playing and we just okay. kind of have our little ritual that we do there, so. We stayed at Koalina fun. too, and I love that. I didn't know that you could go over to Alani. Uh-huh, you can go like, there, you okay. can, you can. I mean, we walked over there, but I didn't know we could use their book, facilities. You can book breakfast there okay. if, you, if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. oh. So we were married at Koalina, so that's our home property. Oh, we also. love that. Koalina, it is, is it just gorgeous. a resort? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's Maria, and it's right next to Alani, but so there, the price three, is just amazing three compared. There's three lagoons there. So okay. Four Seasons, Alani, and then Koalina. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yes, we're dying to get back there. We feel oh. like oh. that would be amazing. Oh. And April will be a good time because we're still going to be a little cold here. A little bit. Mm -hmm. As much as we want to say spring is here in It'll April. It'll probably snow. Spring break. Officially <laughs> spring oh, break. Look Yay. at us. Yep. yep. <laughs> oh. All right, guys. Here we go. Here we go. a good show. Yep. Next on Studio Chatter, have you seen something new in your mailbox? You should have. Welcome back to Studio Chatter. Recently, a new magazine has been arriving in our homes, and it's something that should be of interest to you. It's all about you and your community. Welcome Dan Goff and Dustin Grady from My Community Magazine Spanish Fork to the table. Thanks. Hello, guys. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for coming. So I exciting. was just telling you guys before we went on air, I did get my magazine in the mail. I just have not opened it yet. So we're excited. To it's learn. really easy. Here you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you can open it right now. Is that how you do it? Okay, perfect. Yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, so tell us right. a little bit about who are you? Well, I'm Dan and this is Dustin. Okay, <laughs> so that's enough of that, Dan. <laughs> okay. So let's get to the magazine. <laughs> but the two of you, so was it your idea? How did this come together? What, what's the inspiration? The inspiration is I've been, I've been trying to find a way to connect the community with the businesses in the community, the people with the businesses okay. for years. Okay. And all the marketing and advertising options that we have just didn't ever feel right. I've been doing this for over a decade, magazines and whatnot, never felt right. So the last seven or so years I've been coming up with this idea 
and recently I partnered with Dustin to help me execute it because this guy is a dynamo out there and he just connects everything with everyone and fills in all my gaps. Awesome. So okay. we just brought this and created it and made a magazine for everyone. Yeah, and the concept the concept <clears throat> is uh, you'll find it in other states quite broadly. In fact, a couple years ago, Dan partnered to help see what kind of things they did that made it so successful and, and brought that back in and we incorporate a lot of their really good ideas with the local ideas that we had to make it really fun. And uh, we think we made it a perfect magazine. So let me ask you, this is just for Spanish work. Is this your first magazine or are you also in other cities currently? So this is our first monthly magazine that we're doing with this style but we are going to all the South County communities. Okay. So every community will have their own unique magazine. Yes. So we're not repurposing articles right, get, yeah. and things. It's all about their community, your community, Spanish Fork right now. So this is your first? Yes. Your first yeah. experience getting your feet wet, jumping in. Yeah, October was, uh, came out, the November yeah. issue at the end of October, that was the first one everyone Well, got. I think you're starting in the best community. Yes, you are. Hello. No, we I, not only <laughs> just because I love the community, but our business community is, is great. Yeah, and our right. readership yeah is great and I they, they like to support each other I really right. think Spanish Fork residents like to shop local and support we've local noticed business. that and, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean I'm local I live in Salem my mom graduated from Spanish Fork and yeah so it was just clearly obviously not only the biggest town in South County to start at but all those reasons made a lot of sense right. it has a tight sense of community here mm -hmm. uh, the residents love their businesses they love their community they love their identity yeah. Mm -hmm. As Spanish Fork. They do. And so that is exactly what we're trying to accomplish with the magazine is, is help foster that and build that and play on that. Yeah. So what are some of the different aspects of the magazine that you guys like or wanted to tell us about? Go for it. <laughs> well, the first thing on the cover is the feature family. We want to feature the community in the magazine. And this is one of the best ways to do it, to get people to know each other. And so we really want the residents to nominate their neighbors or mm -hmm. whoever in town that they want to see on the magazine, and then we just put them on there. It doesn't have to be anyone special. We just want the just regular story. families that are down the street and say, hey, look, we're going to show them, showcase them, spotlight them, tell their special story of why they help make Spanish work a better place. Mm -hmm. And when we That's say fun. it doesn't have to be anyone special, everyone's special because we, say, we <laughs> highlight that they're so they're so unique and so different mm -hmm. but we're saying they don't have to be the millionaires who are always on the magazines or the right. people who donate whatever yeah they're just your neighbor and that's, that's the cool like part about it. Right, but everyone has here a story. Right. And share their story. No, I don't yes. have a story. We're like, like yes, everyone you do. has yes. a story. Come yep. and share it. No, yes. nobody wants to hear my story. Well, and that's right. kind of what, what Pete said. Like, oh, we're kind of trying to accomplish the same thing here. Yeah. Just in print version. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Which is, is great. Human interest stories. Yes. Right. And then business stories. I mean, just just all the all the things that, that you are able to read about. I love that. Well, so, I'm just looking here. It's like you have the community calendar. So you're going through, I mean, lots Lots of mm -hmm. informational stuff as well. Absolutely. Wow, guys. Dogs featuring our puppies. <laughs> All the pets so. people love, absolutely. It yeah. sounds like your future goals are to conquer South County. Like you want one Salem, Payson, Springville, yeah. all those. Okay, and right. then do you want to eventually go north or just kind of see how that Well, to, that'll give us that enough goes. for now, but. Yeah. To communities. Communities are still communities. Yeah. They have the, like, Orm's too far spread. There's too many people. People don't care. Down here, people care. People do care. So when we branch out from that, whenever that is, mm -hmm. it will be to like-minded communities where people are still holding together and coming together and care about each other. And we'll just help reinforce that. And we'll help bring it. this to them so they can keep that sense of community even when there's growth, like that's happening all yeah. over the place. Right. And how so. often is a magazine coming out? Monthly. Monthly? Yeah, monthly yep. issues. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So do your advertisers, if we have any businesses watching, they just need to get a hold of you and you, you sell monthly, quarterly, annual? Uh, so for the advertisers, you know, they contract for, you know, anywhere around, around a year to plus. Okay. Typically, these kinds of magazines in other parts of the country do one, two, three year contracts. Okay. Uh, but this is pretty new for around here, so the businesses are not used to that. Yeah. Uh, so we, we offer just slightly shorter length okay. contracts than one, two, three years, so they can try it out for a little bit shorter time. Right. But uh, this kind of advertising needs longer time you'll know it's not a coupon magazine for businesses right. they're sponsors right. similar to when they sponsor like the fiesta days magazine they're just showing the community that they support the community and they're sponsoring it so you see them uh in the magazine and over time that just helps establish that relationship like right. dan was saying to right. really connect the residents and the businesses better 
Are you printing here local as well? Like if somebody wanted to reach out, where are your offices located? Our office is in Orem. Okay. And uh, that's because I've been doing magazines for quite a long time and I've gone all the way from Santa Quinn all the way up into Salt Lake County. Okay. And Orem's very central to that. Yeah, I wondered so, you had the printing background. So is yeah. it a, a printing background and a marketing background? Is, is that... Dustin's an energetic, awesome, <laughs> can do anything back. I'm the, I'm the editor. Uh, oh, oh, and okay, uh, and okay. He, he has a good editing background. I'm, I'm more the publisher. I have the print background, the sales okay. background. But Dustin does sales too. It's like, sales is easy. It's something you can teach. <laughs> yes. So I learn all the time. <laughs> well, that's exciting. So, yeah. Yeah, so what are you really most neat. looking forward to in your upcoming editions? Well, you'll notice, for example, in this one right there on that page, are winners of our decorating contest for mm -hmm. for Christmas, and that so the cute. contest that we do is probably one of the more fun parts because Agreed. the community really engages with that. Right. So we have our spring slash Easter decorating contest coming up in in uh, two months, and then monthly we have a coloring contest for kids and adults to get involved in. Okay. Uh, and, and Macy's sponsors that with gift cards to the winners, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, and other random contests like to get in the magazine. We want the community to tell us their stories and okay. whatever things they have to say, their advice, their whatever. And that's an article writing contest that we do regularly that people win cash for that by that's getting fun. into the magazine. That is neat. So, so we're always excited about that. And you saw that, like the puppies, people yes. send us pictures of their pets. Oh, that's going to So go for there. us, it's really fun <laughs> to be in constant engagement with the community, getting their stories, getting their feedback, uh, whatever it is, um, getting the student athlete of the month from one of the high schools, yeah, getting the performance, yeah. performing arts student. So that keeps us really tied to the community and we it like looks that. like you have mayor mendenhall we had him on studio chatter last time yeah because it's the perfect time to meet him because he yeah. you know, just right, took right. Just do you took have a like a food corner a food review go back a couple pages okay. yes we do we love our food corner uh, so we have so recipes <laughs> we have recipes for everybody we have oh, a professional food that critic way. that comes out right here and does local restaurants and gives his two bits on local restaurants and what to what to expect when you go eat there and okay, what so dishes are Okay, so this Molina's the Mexican food. My <laughs> husband and I drove our side by side back d down there in the fall. Oh yeah. It was delicious. Oh, awesome. So good. Like if you guys need, it's just down in City, um, <clears throat> Canyon Creek. Yeah. By right. Hope Avenue. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. So yummy. We it's kind of reminded me of like the newspaper. Right? And kind of as, um, yeah. like an you could, like, version. But yeah, yeah a better updated, version. Yes. Right. Yes. But like that local <laughs> feel and like mm -hmm. what's going on currently within yeah. our world. Absolutely. Well, this is going to yeah. be fun. Welcome to Spanish Yeah, Thank thanks, you. guys. You're so, be so much. Absolutely. Coming up on Studio Chatter custom furniture at a reasonable price. Stay with us to learn more. Welcome back to Studio Chatter. Are you looking for that perfect sectional or a couch for the family room, but it's impossible to find? Well, we've got the answer. Please welcome Devin and Kenzie Argyle with Argyle Custom Furniture to our table. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Thanks, Thank guys. you, guys. Are you guys super excited to be here? Yeah, very. We are a little nervous, never been on camera before. So. Uh, I'm nervous In every time. In eight minutes, you'll be a pro, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and then we'll be done. Okay, so right before I came down, I made the connection that I know the both of you through a mutual, my son-in-law and my daughter-in-law. So that was really fun. So you two have grown up here in Spanish Fork. Right. Tell well, us a little nice. bit about that. Oh, we love Spanish Fork. So we both, like you said, we grew up here. We met in high school and we were really good friends all throughout high school and dated each other. And, and then we left on missions, came back home, got married and went up to Logan for a few years to finish college. And then we finally got to come back. So we're excited. So you're now that. located back in Spanish Fort. Right, back with our family. And you're expecting your first baby. We are, yeah, this April. We're excited. Congratulations. That's so Congrats. exciting. <laughs> that is fun. So let's hear about the story, like yes. your path from, were you working yeah. up in Logan? Yeah, so when we were going to school up in Logan, I was working at a furniture store. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that was right when, I, I was there for about a year before COVID okay. really started. and. That just COVID. messed up the whole supply chain. <laughs> we understand. Yeah. So, you know, our wait times went from four weeks on about everything to almost 20 weeks just to get wow. a, a sofa. Yeah, so while I was up there, I fostered a relationship with a manufacturer here in Salt Lake. And uh, that was just, it was awesome wow. because they can get us furniture in, you know, four to eight weeks. They can customize anything we want. So when we moved down here, we decided to start our own business up. 
I love that it's locally made too, yeah. which is so awesome. Local from Spanish Fork yeah. and then locally made I think as there's, well. I think there's only two in the state of Utah that actually manufacture furniture still, so that's a oh, very wow. unique That is thing. super right. unique. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about what you guys offer. Yeah, so we do sectionals, sofas, um, and bean bags as, as uh, we both you know. know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the set, the really cool thing that we offer is we can customize um, your size to your room. You know, if you need it at a certain size, we can cut it off there, and it just works out really nice. We have our own sets that we've also created. We've got one called the Kenzie sectional. Oh. It's, a, it's a really fun sectional. It's modular, so you can mix and match, move it around in your house, and Ooh. really build it to size. It's really so. Awesome. Like as you're like rearranging, I love to rearrange, and sometimes the house plans don't allow for that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you could have a a certain way over here, but then move it over here, and it can just all change up. Exactly. exactly. You can buy it piece by piece, or you can have like two cushions as one piece. So it's really easy okay. and functional. So do you have a storefront, or how do we go about ordering? Well, we don't have a storefront right now. We're, okay. we're trying something a little bit unique in the furniture world where um, we, we do have models people can try out, but we actually take kind of home calls. We'll okay. go into people's homes, help them measure it out, make sure they know what fits, and make sure you can actually get it down you know, a stairwell or through a hallway. Oh, good. Yeah, and we did that, and we got a couch just like jammed in that yep. hallway going down, and I was like, I don't know, guys. Yep. And then you <laughs> repaint it, it after. Yep. Yep. Oh. Yep. It gets tough, so yeah. we, we do all of that. We have samples of fabrics. We have over 20 fabrics that you get to choose from and see it in your home. The, the main reason we do that is to save the customer money. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're not Which spending. Which is a huge plus. Mm -hmm. That's oh, yeah. what we really want. Right. Yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, you want good furniture, but not at a ridiculous price. Right. Totally. Yeah. What kind of warranty do they yeah. offer, or do they? The, yeah. They do. Yep, there's a manufacturer warranty on when you get it in your house, making sure that everything's up to spec, you know, the measurements okay. are right, there's no tears in the fabric or anything, and then there's a lifetime warranty on the frame as well. Really? Yeah. And one cool thing that we can do, you know, with the manufacturer here local is, you know, we had a customer who, within a week of having the sectional, sat down with some scissors in his oh. back pocket oh. and put a big Crypto hole. hole. Yeah. <laughs> so we took the cushion up. They threw some more fabric on. You know, a new fabric cushion on oh. there or fabric See, cover. Shop oh. local, guys. Oh, right. I love that story. Yeah, that's not. That's not happening. No, it's with not. Any other manufacturers. <laughs> no. So, it's, it's really so cool. Natasha, you're really looking for oh, a new sectional. Oh my <laughs> word! Yes, yes. I was so excited to have you here. I've had a sectional that I'm about ready to set fire to. I mean, it's just, it's done. And Wait it's, eight weeks because that's about how long. Right. It <laughs> Because, you know, you get locked into one that has very, very permanent, you can only arrange it Dimensions, so, many, right. yeah, so yeah. many certain ways, and you get tired of that look, and you have a room, as you've mentioned, that, you know, can only do so many certain things. So, yes, you want fabric that you <laughs> that you want to look for, so swatches and, and dimensions. So, yes, yeah. I, I think that we could be very so excited what, about So, what this. would that process look like? Let's yeah. say she didn't get your phone number right now. Let, mm -hmm. How do people find you then? What's that process look like? Yeah, you can find us on Instagram. We're Argyle Furniture. Okay. Um, we also have a website, argylecustomfurniture.com. Mm. Um, okay. So you can find us there, and then our contact information is, is on that website and Instagram page. And then we reach out to the customer, you know, come over to the house or do everything over the phone. Some people are more comfortable that way. So Okay. That but it sounds like they can come to your house, and that's where mm -hmm. you have, like, yeah, sit in this couch and see if you like it. Does yep. that right? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And in fact, we, for people who don't want to wait the eight weeks, mm -hmm. we keep our most popular sets in stock as well. No so, way. Yep, next day we can get it into your home. Okay, so can we talk about pricing? Let's yep. let's start small and let's start with the bean bag. Bean bags are going to range from about two hundred and fifty to three hundred and fifty dollars, depending okay. on the fabric. And what determines like the fabric amount? Like, what do you offer? Like linens or yeah. furs or? Yeah, we have furs. a little bit of everything. Yeah, <laughs> Stacy, she's got a really nice fuzzy one. It's very soft. It's a very durable fabric yeah. as well. We've loved Good. It. And then we have some smooth ones that are still soft, but. Um, there's just not as much material in them, so they're they're a bit on the cheaper side. Okay. But they clean up really great. Mm -hmm. and 
Yeah. And as we were talking about, they're massive because my grandkids sent me a picture of them and theirs from you guys. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous too. Fun little soft. It's like a creamy pattern, I feel like. Yeah. But it favorites. had like a pattern yeah. in it. Actually, uh -huh. you two, they got the same one. Did they get the same one? Okay, I'm like, that is, is just fun. It is so soft. Is, yeah, yeah, super soft and cozy. Hey, my my mom, know. who actually went to high school yes. with, with Stacy, she's got three of them. She does? In her house? Oh yeah, in every room that they congregate. She put one in her living room. And just had it there for a movie, and it hasn't moved there since. Hey, so I didn't want mine in my living room. But on Christmas, because you guys delivered it just a couple of weeks before Christmas, mm -hmm. the kids are like, just bring it down. And then I'm like, we're moving it upstairs. No, please. <laughs> they all want it downstairs. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. Yep. And they're all adult kids. Yeah. So yeah. funny. Nice and comfortable. Yeah. So what about sofas? Sofas mm -hmm. are going to start at $500 for okay. a single sofa. And then if you customize your own pieces, obviously that's going to bring the, the cost up. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we can get a sofa and a love set for a thousand dollars easy. Awesome. And then awesome. finally, sectionals. Sectionals. Mm -hmm. sectionals uh, we have a really nice two-piece sectional that fits in most people's homes. Then that starts at a thousand dollars. And oh, then wow. you know those modular. We we just did one that's going to end up being about twelve feet by fifteen feet. Yeah. It's huge. eight total so cool. pieces. Yeah. It's, it's huge. Like in a theater. Yeah. Okay, because yeah, so in, you can, in our yeah. cabin up in Midway, and we just sold up, but this couch had been in the family for generations. And everyone's like, we can't get rid of this. We can never have something made. It was like 15 feet long or right. 20. Yeah. Now we now know. Yeah. 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 So how much was that? That one got uh, close to 4000 Okay. So there's really no cap on the price. But I can, can go do. into RC Willys or Down East and easily oh, yeah. find something for three oh. to 4000 oh, yeah. It's just normal size. Yeah. Definitely. But this is like custom to what your needs are. Mm -hmm. So many Definitely. times you go in there trying to find the right fabric, trying to find the right dimensions, and maybe can't find both. Right. And exactly. that's what I think you guys are offering. Yeah. So I'd also mm -hmm. love to know what's kind of popular right now in fabrics. I mean, are people still purchasing a lot of leather, or is it more linens? What's what's popular We're right now? We're actually seeing a big shift over to the linens, mm -hmm. yeah, to the to the fabrics. Most people don't even ask for leather. Actually, a lot yeah. of people have just gone with the linens. They want something more cozy that they can. Mm -hmm. yeah, Until their yeah. kids spill yeah. on, the, on the linen, and then they want right. to shift back. And to then them. they come it's back for a new, clean. yeah, yep. a new cover. Well, and my son and daughter-in-law just ordered a sectional, but I also love that they got the ottoman, and it sounds like it's a storage ottoman. It is. So tell us about that. Yeah. So the storage ottoman, we can do custom sizes. The one that, oh. yeah. Um, so I mean, we've even done benches that have storage in them. So. <laughs> yeah, if you ever have a question, just let us know. Okay, see if we can do it. But, it. Yeah, yeah. Th and they have about 12 to 14 inches of storage inside, which is, I mean, our, our family has one, and there's more toys in there mm -hmm. than... You can imagine. Yeah. That is a great which place is, for toys. Oh, it yeah. It is, because yeah. then it's not on your couch yeah. and in your living room. And you can okay. still keep it there. Books and remotes, no food, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> Are we done? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're done already. Thank you. Yeah. So <laughs> Instagram, online, call you, order, and how, what's the lead time? Six About, to eight yeah. weeks. Okay, perfect. Hey, thank you thank so you. much. Thanks, guys. Yep. Emergencies don't come on a schedule. That's coming right up on Studio Chatter. Welcome back to Studio Chatter. When disaster strikes, will you be ready? Our next guest knows what you need. Welcome Isaiah Price from Sofo Survival to the table. Welcome. Thank Hello. you. That's really Hello, good to Isaiah. be here with you guys. This is going to be a fun topic. And, and it's scary, broad, but it's but always deep. like yeah. brings me doomsday, but oh. not. <laughs> like if you're prepared, then you don't have to fear. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. No, it's <laughs> emergency preparedness and survival. Like it's it can be such a, an intimidating topic and it can be really overwhelming because there's a lot that goes mm -hmm, into it. Mm -hmm. But it's, if you're prepared, it's, the way to do it is just do it systematically and a little bit at a time and, and you can be prepared for stuff. If you get all stressed out and overwhelmed <laughs> and feel like you have to do it all at once or, or whatever, it, I mean, it, yeah, it can be really scary. Okay. But that's why we're here. So you're gonna share with to us how to do it the right do way. That and come up with a, just a, an easy, well, fun way to do it. I, uh, I kind of our our business slogan is "Adventure awaits. Be ready." Mm. See, and that sounds fun. I kind of wanted to. Does. Yeah, exactly. I wanted <laughs> rather than being like a doomsday prepper and like go a lot of emergency preparedness and survival companies. They kind of play on the fear mm -hmm. a little bit, and I wanted to do the opposite 
and just call it like life's adventures. Of mm -hmm. course, there's the possibility that a major natural disaster could happen mm -hmm. or some True. major scary event could happen. And we're here to help people prepare for that. But I'm certainly not a doomsday prepper. And I, and I kind of like to just call them life's adventures because the more likely thing is that something smaller is going to happen to us. And I don't know, maybe you're the first on the scene of an accident. Maybe, you know, you're out to dinner and somebody chokes on something and you need to step in or you need to do CPR. Those are still major events, but not like a natural disaster. And like so, our earthquake of 2050 or something that yeah. we're preparing for. <laughs> yeah, who knows when it's... <laughs> that my food okay. storage will be no, bad no, no, for. No, no, so. No, no. <laughs> so I have been curious for a very long time about your business. So first of all, you're located on Main Street in yes. Spanish yes. Fork. Yes, yes. right? Okay. Yep. By one of my favorite stores, my sister's closet. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So next time you're shopping, you need to divert and get the thing I've been curious about for a long time. You sometimes have the, I think, they're the, the water mm -hmm. storage devices, the big blue tanks that are out front, correct? Yep. Is that right? Yep. Okay. So I probably need one of those. Yes, Some you of do. those, two of those. I have four. How many do you get? Four? Okay. I probably need some big ones because I only have some jugs. I mean, I'm sure that you probably yeah, like, have some got two gallons for the week. Let's go. I do. No, yep. no, seriously speaking, though, but like, so, you know, along comes COVID. And you probably had a mad rush, I'm, I'm sure. Well, you opened during COVID first. So that's kind of the crazy thing. So I, I actually started the business about seven years ago. Um, my background is in aviation. I'm a pilot. And I was, I was gone a lot. I was flying. And, and I didn't have time to do this business full time. And so I started a website and just kind of did it a little bit uh -huh. here and there. Eventually, you know, the itch got strong enough that I quit my other, you know, I was doing that and another job. Oh. I quit those so that I could dive into it full time. January wow. 1st of 2020 is when I started doing that just from home. Oh. Oh. So the timing is crazy, right? Yeah. Um, I worked from home for a couple of months and then all of a sudden all the COVID stuff started happening. Oh. And I had always wanted to open a retail store. Okay. But I didn't really have the, I, you know, I didn't have the money to do it yet and, and kind of needed a little bit of a push to do it. Well, COVID was kind of that push. Okay. And I was like, mm -hmm. man, if I'm going to do it right, right now, now is the mm -hmm. time to do it. Yeah. And it was kind of weird because all the other businesses are closing down and they're mandating, you know, everyone's shutting the doors. And I'm like, I don't Let's know open. if this is official. <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm supposed to open, but like, I just dove in and did it. I opened the doors on May 1st of 2020. And it, the whole thing has honestly been kind of a springboard, okay. um, which has been great. But I think the reason why, though, is because there is, along with a lot of the weird stuff that has happened, which I don't love, mm -hmm. the thing that I do love about the last couple of years is that it's caused a lot of just general um, awareness, like a lot Everyone's mm -hmm. a little bit more aware of that. We do need to the, actually be prepared exactly. if we don't have toilet paper or yeah, that, whatever. We call it the great water. Short, toilet water. paper shortage yes, of 2020. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Diet Coke. That yeah. was yes. <laughs> that expires super fast though. It does. Yeah. So, so what are our kits? I mean, really, just and I'm sure that you would probably talk anybody through if we if we if we come into the store to say, look, here's your basics. Mm -hmm. Here's here's what you should have. Yep. Like if any of that occurs, have a plan. Right. Yep. Um, at least here's maybe um, what do you call them? A burner phone. Maybe how to meet with your family. Yep. Here, a 72-hour kit, some cash, all, all those things. Right. I do not have a burner phone. One of burner the phone. <laughs> She's in forensics or something. Like we don't, we don't even know what she does. <laughs> okay, right. I'm just toilet paper, <laughs> diet coke, <laughs> wheat, and, and a the burner phone. The lockers have some <laughs> burner phones. <laughs> Yes, you gotta have some phones. Some emergency <laughs> okay, phones that you so throw tell away. us some of the top things that maybe have been in need or want this last year or two. Yeah. Okay. So food storage, water storage, first aid, and um, like survival. You know, seventy-two hour yep. kits. Those are kind of our main things. Okay. Um, but it's it's weird because COVID's caused all kinds of supply chain issues and shortages mm -hmm. across the board. We have a lot of products that we carry that they're either not available at all, mm -hmm. or the lead time is like, you know, Weeks. months yeah. out, you know. Is that so difficult to run a business that way? It's crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really weird. I luckily have some experience in some previous jobs doing, you know, supply chain management and stuff. So wow. I've been able to manage it okay, but still like there's things that you just flat out can't get or, you know, you're you're anticipating the seasonal changes, you know, uh -huh. in your business mm -hmm. and what's popular in the spring, summer, fall, winter. But then you all of a sudden have to tack on 
the the lead times for all the different projects. Yeah, we have so thousands ordering of products, six like just, months you know, or a year beforehand yeah. to get it. So it can get kind of complicated, but in general, yeah, those are the main items, and we try really hard to keep things in stock. Okay. Um, because part of the problem, like for instance, with freeze dryers, that's one of the items that we sell in the store. And if you go and try to buy one of those direct, you're looking at about a 12 week lead time. But we just, we order them constantly so that we constantly have them in the pipeline and they make us wait just like everybody else does, all the other customers. Mm -hmm. But since we have them constantly being delivered, we, we keep them in stock. And we okay. do the same thing with our water tanks and okay. 72 hour kit supplies. And um, which reminds me, and one of the things we hand to everybody when they come in the store is a 72 hour kit checklist. Okay, yep. So it's I was just like going to say education. Do yeah, you have that for us? <laughs> exactly. And speaking of education, that's one of the things we really want to do uh, with the business is, of course, we have all the supplies and the gear and the things, right? Mm -hmm. But it's really important to me to educate people. Sophos, the, the, where that comes from, it actually means wisdom. It's a Greek word Ooh. that means wisdom. And I think that's a huge part of emergency preparedness. Yes. Mm. There's the stuff, but then there's knowledge and education. And so going back to my pilot, um, my aviation background, as a pilot, you practice emergencies constantly. Mm -hmm. Just in a simulated environment, you're going over and over and over the things that could go wrong. And so when something actually does go wrong, which it will at some point, right. you have been there and done it. And you've created a, a memory, you know, a checklist, and mm -hmm. you've memorized your response. And then when that event happens, you just go into it and you respond and you take care of it. I wanted to take that methodology and apply it to our everyday lives mm -hmm. and, you know, just our general public and educate people on what to do and how to do things. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the supplies that go with it. So okay. that's our mission. What yeah. about, I mean, I, I know one of the mistakes I have made over the years also is like rotation. Okay, so the food, it's great to have the food supply, but if it sure. gets really old and weebly and disgusting, then nobody wants to touch it anyway. Yep. Is that part of the education also? Yeah, Speaking yeah. We do workshops on um, food storage, water storage, first aid. We do uh, certification classes, okay. all kinds of stuff. We have a classroom upstairs in the building where we just, we teach all these things. I and do so, not know yeah, that we, part. We go, That's awesome, right? Yeah. So do you go out to different groups or do you have most everyone come to the store? Both. Okay. Yeah, I, I go and do presentations all the time to different wards and stakes and businesses. I think I've and, seen them on our list of mm -hmm. inner stake. Yeah, 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 it's awesome because I can go and just do a private, intimate setting where just a few people. I've done groups or you know presentations to hundreds of people. And then, of course, we do classes there in the, okay. in the okay. store as well. So much to offer. What's your favorite right. thing about all of it? Like, what yeah. do you love teaching? Right. I, I love talking. I, well, so I'm not a very good salesman, uh -huh. but when people come into the store, all the stuff we carry is stuff that I love and trust and use okay. myself. That's really how a lot of the things are in there because that's what I do. I just, I pretty much live in the outdoors mm -hmm. and I love emergency preparedness. I love gear. I love all the stuff, okay. right? And so when people come in to ask about it, I'm like, okay, hey, this is why you need this because this is how to use it. I trust it. I try to keep a really high level of, you know, quality products, okay. not the cheap stuff. Not that you can't get good stuff for cheap, but, um, but I try to keep to that last. really high, high quality item. But that's half the battle though, yes. right? Is the passion for it? Because if you're just saying it as like, oh, emergency preparedness is If you not, believe like, in it, then yeah, you, it's yes. Not, it's not super exactly. exciting, but if right. you make it exciting, it's kind of sounds yep. exciting. So yeah. I don't feel like I'm selling it's things. It's an adventure. It's not like you're going it really and getting a adventure. used car salesman pitch on something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You just I'm have just passion. showing you how to, you know, why you need it and, you know, how well, I, I use it. So it right. makes it easier. Yes. Yeah. 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 We have something like that And thanks for finally getting in. I know Natasha's wanted you here forever and you and I have tried to connect and today it worked out it like the stars aligned right? yeah. you had a good five hours notice yeah. <laughs> and now we know what sofas means wisdom yep. yes I love survival. and we're more wise about it now thanks yep. so much thank thanks. you coming up next we'll take a look into the children's justice center Welcome back to Studio Chatter. It's unfortunate that we need to have such services, but are you familiar with the Children's Justice Center? Welcome Stephanie Berglund, the board president at the Children's Justice Center, to the Chatter. Hello, Hello. Stephanie. Hi. 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 Thanks. Thanks for having me. This is wonderful. Yes. Well, thanks for being here. Yes. Yeah, it's my pleasure, really, it is, to share our mission and what we're doing as much as we can get out. I think so you two ladies probably know more than I, so explain to us a little bit about 
who you are and yeah. what you do, what this so, foundation is. Um, I'm the president of the board. So basically what we're in charge of is making sure that the CJC has the funds that they need to really help the community in the way that they need it. Mm -hmm. There are funds from the government um, and we got a wonderful donations and grants, but there's always extra that they want to do and help. So that's our main job is to make sure that we have the extra funds that they need. Um, but the Children's Justice Center um, is a home-like facility. It's an old home that they renovated in Provo. And so you walk in, the child walks in. So this is a center for children that have been abused, whether it's physical or sexual abuse. Um, and it's a reporting station, basically. It's a place that they can go and tell their story one time. So instead mm -hmm. of going to the police officer and then going to mm -hmm. the legal representation or a medical social worker, all the different avenues um, of people that are gonna help these children, they only have to go one place. We have a medical exam room. Um, they tell their story one time in an interview room. It's recorded so that anyone that needs any information afterwards can go back to the um, video and the recording instead of having to ask the child again and again and again okay. their trauma, which is wonderful. So the child walks in, it's a beautiful space with comfy furniture, beautiful artwork that's been donated by the community, toys, activity kits, snacks, and then each child gets a handmade bear by someone from the community. So, so can I beautiful. ask, do they mm -hmm. only have to go then to this home one time? Well, it's not like a revolving door where they go back for therapy? For, they can go back for therapy. Oh, so if okay. they're reporting, the reporting process is only one interview. Okay. And then from there, they help the child and any non-offending family members with any of the resources that they need. So they have group therapy, they have individual therapy, they have um, all the legal resources, social resources okay. right there. So, okay. so nice. So yeah. I was thinking it was more like a stay place, but this is oh, more yeah, like no. a community mm -hmm. center yes, for exactly. them specifically yep. for their need. And you have to be referred probably the officer or the advocate yes. with the city mm -hmm. or whoever you're working yep, we'll with. We'll send you there. And that's actually how I found out about it. I called our sheriff in Mapleton and asked him if we had some sort of sexual abuse response team in Mapleton. And he said, no, we actually just send all of the kids to the Children's Justice Center. So that's how I got connected with them because I wanted to be involved in that at Mapleton. And you just and randomly just reached out and did yeah. that. <laughs> so no, I just, there's good something people that in the was world. Important. How often are you there? I'm not there very often. Okay. Because um, you're doing the board. Yes, because I'm doing the, the board stuff. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. So I've only been affiliated or by association just because I know some young, mm -hmm. lovely young ladies that through the Miss America organization yes. either have volunteered their time mm -hmm. or some of the dolls or some yes. blankets or, or have given back kind of, mm -hmm. I guess, to the, to the Children's Justice Center. So... Explain to us how we can either volunteer by maybe giving some of those mm -hmm. items or how we can give time. Yes, so I talked with the director yesterday and she said the main thing they need right now is snacks and drinks. Mm -hmm. So when the children come, they can be there for up to three or four hours, okay. depending on how the whole process happens. And so they try to have a kitchen stocked with snacks and drinks. So that's something that they're in need of right now. Um, we, of course, take any type of monetary donations from any businesses or families or organizations. Um, and then there's opportunities to volunteer. So you can volunteer to be on the Friends Board, which is I'm the president of. Okay. Um, we're actually looking right now for a CPA. Our okay. CPA just moved to Texas. Mm -hmm. So we're really in need of someone that can help with financial records, with the audits, and all of that. So if, and that's all volunteer? Yes, Thanks. a volunteer licensed CPA. Um, and then anyone else that wants to help on the board. And we meet once a month, um, and then we have usually one big fundraiser and then little things throughout the year. Okay. Um, and then you can also volunteer to come in for about two hours a week and just be there to sit with the children. If their parents are in talking or they need you know, to be entertained for a little bit, they can go in for about two hours and just sit with the kids and play with them and give them snacks and that sort of thing. Um, and I think, oh, we have a volunteer mentor program as well. So you can be paired with one child and stay with them for six months. So you kind of stay with them through the whole process. Some of them will help if they're teenagers, help them get jobs afterwards or whatever that they need after that. So those are the main ways to volunteer right now. Now, I would also guess through that process that you just can't because it's a safe place. Mm -hmm. You can't just drop off yes. food or you can't just volunteer that you have to have some type of a background mm -hmm. check or how, how does that process yes. work? So the volunteer you do on our website, if you just Google the Utah County CJC, on the website there's a volunteer form to fill okay. out, a background check, fingerprinting, all sure. of that, even to be on the Friends Board, um, even though we're not there very often. But if you're gonna drop off donations, okay. you can just walk right in. Okay. Yeah, and someone will 
I think there's, you know, it rings and you someone will find you if they're busy. Okay, <laughs> but what are yeah. your hours there? Um, that's a good question. Yeah. I would need to look that up, but I know I'm sure that it's they're, just online, no? yeah, I know that they're open until five. I don't know what time they open at. Okay. But yeah. And is Provo your only location? So we have another location in American Fork. Okay. Um, it's a temporary space right now. And so that's one of the things that we're really working on the Friends Board is to, um, fund money for this new facility in American Fork. They bought the house, they're renovating it, but you know how construction could take. Yes. Yeah. So it's taking Especially a little bit longer now. than we expected <laughs> and it's expensive, but yeah, they've um, bought an old home just like in Provo and are gonna renovate it and create a new space. So oh, we have, um, the director gave me some stats yesterday. Yeah, she said we, last year they served 13,000 or 1,385 children. And that was 2021. So that's both American Fork and Provo saw 1,385 wow. children. Um, the family members, they help the family members with any type of services they need as well, as long as they're not offending, obviously. Um, 2,377. They gave 1,158 um, individual therapy ses sessions and 2,737 group therapy sessions. And then they're still in contact with 2,500 families. Oh, wow. Afterwards, I mean, you know, for years after helping them with what they Ongoing need. Ongoing therapy. Mm -hmm. Wow. I know. That's, it's so So is this connected to the government? Does the government have mm -hmm. their own process yes. or is this just integrated in that? Yes, it is okay. a government facility, okay. um, but they always need extra funding. Yeah, so, of yeah. course. Okay. Yeah. And how long have you been on the board? Uh, about a year and a half. So okay. I'm the new president as of January, but I've been on the board for about a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. And can you go into like what are the the major problems or the most common ages where kids are coming in? You know, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Um, I know that with COVID, um, the numbers actually went down because children weren't around people to report to because they were at home and they didn't have coaches or teachers. That's a lot of the um, reporting that we see. So I know that the numbers are going back up, which is sad, but also good. It means that children are reporting and things are happening. Um, but I know it goes all the way to age 18, um, but I'm not sure of the exact age range. What about our, I mean, you hear family is the bigger offender, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, mm -hmm. that the case? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that we really saw that with COVID as the numbers went down because they weren't able to report. So yeah, mm -hmm. we definitely help the non-offending family um, but yeah, there's a lot of stress in life and in families and especially the last couple of years. So I definitely think it's been heightened, um, with domestic abuse, but yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> I just, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, I mean, I, I would, I would guess that there was probably something for you that made you want to do something, mm -hmm. you know, to yeah. take this on yourself. Well, I have four children myself. Okay. Um, and then my degree is in child development okay. and I'm going on, my youngest is in, is five. So I'm going to go get my master's in social work. Oh, this are next you year. really? Yes. Oh, so I've always had a heart for children and just for making sure that they have a spa safe space to mm -hmm. feel loved and grow. And I also understand that that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. And so um, anyway, I thought about reaching out to my local um, you know, sheriff's office and see what they had. And then this is where I found the center. And I've been so, so impressed by what they do, how they serve these children, how they make them feel. I mean, you walk in and it is just a safe spot in such a terrible time in their lives. Right, right. Very traumatic. Mm -hmm. Wow, Stephanie. Yeah. Thanks for stepping Thank up you. and just thinking. Well, yeah. just That's doing. Fantastic. We're happy to share. Yeah. I know, like you said, it's a hard thing to talk about, mm -hmm. but we're happy to share what we do anytime, anywhere. So Best thanks for having me. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you for educating thanks. us. Thanks yeah. so much. There's more studio chatter coming up. Welcome back. What did we learn today? Lots of good guests today. Oh, yeah, so a much. full book. Yeah, very full. It's going to cost me a lot of money. Okay, I know. I would a love a new sectional. <laughs> I mean, we all right? would. Or an yes. ottoman. Yes. 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 Yep. Okay, that's So a maybe plus. what we should do, I have an, a plan for okay. our viewers. <laughs> we take pictures of our current things we want to sell. Okay. And then we let our viewers oh. bid on it. Oh, I'm not letting anybody <laughs> buy the couch. You're burning it? <laughs> I think my downstairs one, I've tried before and people love it so much, but it's got like a broken like, like 
foot. And, oh. Yeah. But they're like, oh, we love this. It's so comfy. You know, I, uh, yeah. uh, I don't know. It's, you know what? It's not horrible. It's been well loved. It's just, you know, when it's time to just update. Yes. And honestly, like, the kids have just, you know, when it's just, when you have kids and you're like, oh, well, I just, you know, I'm not going to update yet because they're going to spill on it yeah. again. I know. And the teenagers, just, they get so rough with everyone yes. rolling in there. You just don't want to be uptight either. You know, no. I'm like, oh, mm. well, right now, like, spill the popcorn. So how long it. have right. you guys had your current couches? Mm, a while. Since we did our basement, so like 15 years. Okay, I I'm bet. on 22. Well, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the thing with sectionals, because sectionals are tricky. When they do work in a space, then they you work can't. in a space. Then yeah. you kind of don't want to shift them up, and you're like, well, that one goes there, and then the Christmas tree fits there, and yeah, it's just, you know, why change it if Right, it's I know, and I love changing. <laughs> yes. But with my house floor plan I can't I, I don't have a sectional but I have two couches so it's not a couch and a love seat it's okay two full-size couches and that's what you need in the space so, yeah but, I love but downstairs idea, we can make they, one for downstairs when you finish yeah a sectional down there the big win uh-huh the big, the big win. win so changing gears okay. uh, the Children's Justice Center yeah that's that's really heart-wrenching for me but mm -hmm. such good information I think it's really important mm -hmm. that it's out there I loved at the very end that she told us that they had an Instagram and I think that that's maybe the way like people could reach out to it mm -hmm. or you and know say, ask hey, for help I drop off some yes some juice ask for help or donate treats. yeah absolutely but just a really great thing that I had no idea was out there yeah. and easy to drop off treats and drinks yeah. to get back yes yep Always mm -hmm. can give back to that. Yeah. Or go sit with a child for a couple of hours that's in need. Yep. I mean, that's just really special too. Especially but. a lot of the grandmas out there that maybe are lonely and it, it would fill a void mm -hmm. for both. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and how about the community magazine? Right? That's going to be fun. Yes. That yep. will be good. I do believe they started in the right community mm -hmm. because we are just a tight We knit. are a it tight is. knit community. Yeah. We love to support each other and be People there. People love and to share. Yep. Also, you know, it's interesting when they said we wouldn't do it in Orem because it's not a tight knit community. At my job, because I work at the magazine, we tried to sell Orem City mm -hmm. Festival magazine. Mm -hmm. It was tough. Was it? I think we tried t two years. Really? I felt like I grew up in Provo, and I felt like Provo was like a sub community of Provo. So it of never Orem. felt like I mean Orem. Yeah, I never felt like it was like its own city for yeah. so long. So I don't sense that like community there yeah, either. I, I it, felt like Provo more had the community It's feel. so big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's businessy. Yes. Yeah. And you have community. all the all the cities coming into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I guess that's with growth. I don't know, guys. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, Spanish work is still growing, but you can still waltz into Macy's and still feel like you know your neighbor. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. It's harder. It's, feel of it. it's not like it was 20 years ago when you'd go mm -hmm. and see so many people. There's yeah. times I get in and out and I'm thinking, oh, I didn't see anyone That was weird. I didn't even say right. hello to like a neighbor or, a, you know, former Because back schooling. in the day there was like one grocery store, one and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You saw so everyone. So interesting, like you said, with the growth. Yeah. But, and then sofas. Yeah. Wisdom. Congratulations mm -hmm. to him yeah. and his new little baby. Yeah. But just the story when you hear people like, I was a pilot and then I had other passions and I wanted to do this. I think it's so fascinating to hear the stories behind and the how business. it jumps into it. Like how oh, he's I like, that. I just decided to do it in January and then COVID hit. Yeah. And that was probably a huge catapult for his oh, business. For sure. Right? Yep. And a small world. So the right timing. When you live right over the border in Mapleton. I know. And then two of our guests tonight are your neighbors. Exactly. Community guys. Yeah. Ew, I love that. And mm -hmm. I love those stories that have passion behind them and, and you just, it kind of fuels your fire. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, I just want a little, I just want a little bit of that. When you have something that you feel like could drive you, and you're like, gosh, yeah. I just, I wish I had just a little bit more of that. Drive, so yeah, good to for do them. it. Yes, yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, fun show. Yeah, it's really fun, fun show. Super informative. Yes, yeah. I was just going to say that, yep. an educational taboo. Yep. So yeah. thank you to all of our guests. And thank you for being here with us. We hope you enjoyed the program. If you learned something new today, please tell a friend about us.